Solidity is basically very similar JavaScript and uh, syntaxes, some difference in the syntaxes, but from the overall concept perspective, from all the commands that it has, it is very, very similar to it. So, uh, only thing is that uh, as this is a native Ethereum language, uh, it is tailored to Ethereum. So, so you will see a lot of uh, uh, you will see a lot of uh, commands uh, which are very which are like built-in commands directly to be able to access a block, an address of a block, a timestamp of a block. So you have built-in functions basically so that you can easily program a smart contract using Solidity. So let's uh, try to uh, start. Uh, so Solidity basically is a contract-oriented language. So contract-oriented in the sense that in our object-oriented languages like Java and C++, uh, we talk about classes and objects. But in Solidity, what we talk about is contract and functions. You, it is a synonym for a class and a method. So like there's a class, you have a lot of methods in it. Similarly, you will write a contract, and contract will have a lot of functions. Plus. But apart from that, from the perspective of variable declaration, global variables, local variables, all that concept-wise, is it's all the same. Some differences here and there, but in general, it's a contract-oriented language, a high-level language, very similar to JavaScript. Now, the target, basically, this uh, Solidity is designed to target the Ethereum virtual machines in a sense that when you write a smart contract using Solidity, uh, you will be able to execute it uh, in an Ethereum virtual machine with which you can consume these functions to do your blockchain transactions. Uh, it's a statically typed supports inheritance libraries, complex user defined types, which invariably every, almost every high level language supports. What does it mean by statically typed? Uh, it's basically that when you declare a variable, you need to provide the type of this variable. So you uh, you just can't have a, a kind of a undefined variable. So you need to specify the elementary type or what the type of the variable is. So uh, in contrast, as I said, instead of object-oriented, it's a contract-oriented uh, function or language. And it compiles this instruction into bytecode so that uh, you can now uh, have your virtual machine on a Linux or a window or any 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 machine. You will be able to uh, compile this code. So it's network independent. So that's the reason the instructions are compiled into a bytecode. So the first command, or when we start writing a Solidity uh, code, the first thing that we need to mention there is this Pragma Solidity version. Now, why do we have to uh, specify this? Because uh, this will help us to make sure that our code is executed uh, with the right compiler version. So it is possible that with the future versions of the compiler, our code might become incompatible. So in order to make sure that our code gets executed with the right version of the compiler, uh, we mentioned this pragma solidity with the So uh, there is there is two concepts. I mean, this is something which uh, Basically, we should remember this. The memory basically is common to any other programming language. So these are the variables. If you declare these variables, the lifespan of these variables are within your runtime uh, uh, scope. So if you have declared a variable within your function, then after the function is executed, the, the data within those variables are lost. So that is something called memory. So and then the the other kind of variables that we have is storage. Now, the storage variables are the variables which get persisted in the blockchain itself. And uh, these, uh, the next time when you execute the contract uh, with the same code as it gets executed, this, the, the data within these variables are already available. When we talk about, so within the contract, when you declare some variables, for example, let's uh, declare string name and maybe string symbol. So these variables that I'm declaring, by default, if you declare it in the, uh, in the scope of a contract, they become a storage variable. So the value of these variables will reside uh, as far as, uh, till the contract is executed completely.
the elementary types of uh, solidity are uh, like boolean so boolean is basically uh, it starts with bool so when you declare a bool variable it's basically true or false uh, then in case of integers there are two kinds of integers in signed and unsigned so signed is with int and unsigned is with uint and uh, the uh, size of the integer can be from 8 bits to 256 bits so if i if just say uh, like this so by default when you declare a variable with uh, uint it means uh, it's a 256 bit variable if you want to declare a shorter one then you need to qualify it with the exact number the next as i said that uh, solidity is a proprietary or basically a focused language to write your smart contracts for ethereum so it has a lot of built-in functions so one of its elementary type itself is address so if you uh, if you declare a variable with an address so it holds the 20 byte value of an ethereum address so the wallet uh, ID or the wallet uh, Ethereum uh, wallet address that you have you can store it in this variable so for example if I uh, just give your address my address and I can say it as this is my address so the address can store now So uh, this is the uh, so this way you can store the address of your wallet within this uh, elementary elementary type. Now uh, this elementary type comes with two members. One is balance. In in case you want to know the balance of your uh, current wallet, and the other is the transfer. So these are kind. Of, this is this is synonymum uh, synonymous of a built-in function method so you have balance and transfer with the transfer command or a transfer member you can transfer X amount of uh, uh, tokens from uh, your wallet to someone else's wallet so this is about address now when we then there are certain elementary types like uh, strings now string literals are written with either double or a single quote. So what is interesting here is that if you write a string with a double quote and if you give a space, that doesn't mean that it is four bytes, it's still three bytes. So the trailing zeros or the trailing space is not considered in the byte length of a string. So anything that is trailing will be ignored when you calculate the length of a variable, of a string variable. For example, if I if I just name this as if I give it like this it is it's still the length is it's still six and not nine so so it can also it also supports so uh, escape characters so if you use uh, slash x n n then it's a hexa, hexa value and it inserts an appropriate byte and if it's slash u n n n if you give then it's a unicode code point and inserts utf I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist for more information visit our website now keep learning with intellipat